Good morning, classy, classy people. How y'all doing? My name is Wayne Bolden. I am your speed king. Well, here is the granddaddy of them all, the Breeders' Cup Classic, the Long Jean Breeders' Cup Classic. Going one mile and a quarter, a field of nine, for a cool six million dollars. This is, again, the granddaddy of them all. You know, so we're going to doll right into this uh, race. Uh, you folks already know the characters and the actors in this race. This is really not a tough race on paper, to be honest with you. I know we make a whole lot of hubbub about it, but it's really not that tough. And I think what's fair in this here Breeders' Cup Classic, we typically do uh, descending order from one through whatever, in this case nine, but we're going to start in with the favorite. Well, Nick's go is your favorite. He has drawn post five. Obviously, he's trained by the untouchable barn of Brad Cox and all. Again, his merry horses. You know, I have a little fun with the, that all the time. But this is serious business. Nick's go is the five horse. He couldn't have drawn a better position in the middle of the path. He has 23 starts, obviously, with nine wins, three seconds, and one third for a cool $5.5 million. You don't earn that by mistake. He is a five-year-old who is by a Panther and, like I said, trained by Brett Cox. Well, the fact of the matter is, Mr. Go Nick is 5-2 to two on the morning line and is your morning line favorite, and he should be. Let me make it really, really clear. Going into this race, the other eight contestants and runners and entries in here is not as fast as Nick's go. And I just don't mean out the gate fast. I mean cruising speed ability. They don't have that ability. And Nick's go's cruising speed is the same throughout the entire race when he runs his race. In other words, this horse really never gets headed. And his quarter splits are about the same all the time. His speed figure makes him two to three lengths better than anybody else in this field. So here is what we're saying. Nick's go in his last three races, uh, one October 2nd at Churchill Downs, the Lucas Classic, which was only a grade three race. He breaks and he gets clear by two limps and nobody even heads him. The race before that, which is the Whitney, where he beat Maxfield on August 7th, the closest that they've ever gotten to him was a limp and a half. Throughout the race, he's in front by three or four limps. So what I'm saying to you, Nick's go is deservingly the favorite and clearly the horse to beat. If we are or the contenders are to beat him, one or two things has to happen. One, Nick's go don't run his race and everybody else do. In other words, he just have an off race. He doesn't run the typical Nick go race and everybody else runs their race. That puts them very, very much in the race. Two, if you are to beat him, he runs his race and somebody will have to improve two to three limps minimum to beat him. So I want to make it clear, going into the race, Nick's go, speed figures, his cruising altitude, towers over this field. It's not close. In order for someone in this race to win this race other than Nick's go, those two things have to happen. Him not run his race that we're typically seeing him run. And two, they will have to improve. If everybody runs their best race that we see on the paper, they can't beat Nick's go. They can't beat him. So the, fi the fact of the matter is Nick's go is the favorite and he should be. Now, let's go to the two-year-old champion, the number four horse at three to one, who I believe is an underlay at that price. It is the other Brad Cox horse. Well, he's just not as fast as Nick's go going in. If he is to win this race, he will need to improve by two to three limbs, no doubt about it. And if Nick's go runs his race, 
essential qualities is not beating him. Now, essential quality does have races, as you and I know, who's by Tappet. He has nine starts and eight wins. And his very last race, which was the Run Happy Travers, was a very, very good race with Midnight Bourbon. He followed Midnight Bourbon around the track, stayed on his hip, who was the speed, and he went by him. Well, he's not going to have the benefit of lapping on to Nick's go. He will be fourth or fifth in this race, making one run. It is probable that Brad Cox could run one-two in this race because he has basically the perfect setup. He has the fastest gate horse, per se. I believe Hot Rod Charlie's going to have something to say about that. But all things being fair, Nick Sko will be on the lead. And when they turn for home, we do know who will be making up uh, ground in the stretch. And we know, and we've seen it over and over again, that essential quality will make his move, and it will be down the center of the lane. So it is possible that the Mary Hoss is, both of them, the number five, Nick Sko, and the number four, essential quality, could run one, two in this race. That is not... I mean, that is not uh, unfathomable. But again, that's why they're favorite and co-favorite, right? So again, Essential Quality is a beautiful two-year-old champion, has never done nothing wrong, only ran out of the money the one time in the Derby where he was wide at the top of the lane, and he's won eight of nine. How do you knock it? And it's $4 million. Brad Cox has two exceptional, exceptional horses. It's one thing to get one exceptional horse into the Breeders' Cup Classic, but he has a charm life, and he's sitting there with two, two quality horses. And I think it's nothing to argue about. I think it's Nick's go and then everybody else, and when you talk about essential quality, the three-year-old, it's clear that he's better than all the other three-year-olds in the race. And how do you say that? Well, they're not eight of nine, and they haven't won $4 million. The only race this horse has lost, again, is the Kentucky Derby. So that is the way that you, or at least we look at it here. Essential quality is better than any of the other three-year-olds in the race going in. He's acclaimed. He's acclimated. He's a two-year-old champion. And with the way he does it isn't pretty. His speed figures are comparable and better than the other three-year-olds. But or equal, but they're not close to essential quality. I mean, to Nick's go. Nick's go is an exceptionally, exceptionally fast horse. Now, do I like that? Not really, because he's going to be two to one or eight to five. Now, is there a chance that we think one of these horses is sitting on a big race and has improved? I do. I think Hot Rod Charlie has literally turned the corner. And I think it was the Pennsylvania Derby down at the parks and Ben Selim PA that Hot Rod Charlie, the number three horse, turned the corner. And his cruising speed hasn't improved. And believe me, you. He has every right to get there. And he can actually, if he chooses to, get in front of Nick's go, in my humble opinion. For sure. The one horse in the race that I think has a big problem is the number eight horse, Medina Spirit. Medina Spirit obviously won the Kentucky Derby and then came back and won the awesome again stakes by open lips. He has a problem. I've never seen Medina Spirit run off the pace to win the race. And if he thinks he's going to run off the pace and catch Nick's go and then out finish the central quality and uh, Hot Rod Charlie... I think, I think that's sadly mistaken. So I believe the horse that's really up against it here is Medina Spirit, and I'm going to throw him off our ticket. I don't like him in this spot, for sure. I do think there's an X factor in this race. I believe it's Nick's go first, uh, uh, then uh, Hot Rod Charlie, and then Essential Quality. But the X factor in this race, to me, is someone that we are not talking about and we don't talk about. The number nine horse is Max Player. Well, Max Player is trained by Steve Asmussen, and I'm not being a homer here. Trust me. I'm reading this and I analyze this properly. And Max Player has 11 starts, four wins, one second, and two thirds for a cool $1.2 million. He has never knocked himself out and he has improved each and every time. He is a four-year-old in this race. 
And I believe that he turned the corner in the Suburban on July 3rd down there where he beat a tremendous horse in the name of Mr. Guy, who's a Godolphin horse, who's the son of Ghost Zapper. And Happy Saber was in that race. He was a cool 11 to 1. His speed figure is in that race. In that race is fantastic and is just as good or better than the three three-year-olds in this race. That's right, essential quality. Hot Rod Charlie and Medina Spirit. That suburban race really turned the corner for him. And if that wasn't enough, the Jockey Club Gold Cup on the 4th of September where he walked the dogs on him, Max Player, is even better. The horse is coming off a 63-day layoff. He's 8-1, to one, which is great, great value, and I believe is the value play and long shot in this race. I will not underestimate Steve Asmussen and his ability to get these horses to run. And until they start doing what they do, he always is viable to be bet. I believe Max Player is the X factor in this race. I believe him and Essential Quality will be the two horses moving forward coming down the lane if Nick's go is not already gone. We do owe it to ourselves. Those are the four big horses. You know them. I don't have to tell you. It's just picking your flavor. That's how I see the race flow going. But we do owe it to the other contenders to take a look. And we'll start with Tripoli, the number one horse. 15 starts, four wins, three seconds, and three thirds. Trained by John Sheriff. The matter of fact is Medina Spirit, Stella Boy, Express Train has all beaten him. You know, the number one horse, Tripoli, is just not fast enough. I mean, he's at his home track, but he I don't think he could beat these horses. So we're going to throw him directly off the ticket. The same thing with the number two horse, Express Train, 14 starts, four wins. And the fact of the matter is, is that he is subpar below the three-year-olds in here. So the number two horse, Express Train, should be thrown directly off the ticket. The number three horse, Hot Rod Charlie, we do believe is sitting on a big, big, big race. And he is our first pick in this race on our sheets. Yes, we put him in front of Nick's go, but let's make it clear. If he is to win this race, he will have to improve or Nick's go not run his race for sure. The number three horse, Hot Rod Charlie, is extremely dangerous in this race. The number four horse, we talked about him, essential quality. He's going to be picking him up and laying him down, coming down the lane. But the fact of the matter is, I believe Hot Rod Charlie is better than him right now. I know Nick's go is better than him. But that being said, the champion is still the champion, and I think he will be our third choice in this race for sure. The number five horse, well, we talked about Nick's go. We're not going to go on with a dialogue about him. If he runs his race and nobody improves, then you know who your winners is. They will be draping, you know, the roses and the trophy to Nick's go. He's extremely tough, and you better be running if you're going to beat him. He is the likely winner in this race. Our collector, well, he's going to press. He only has one thing to do. If he sits back and wait, his race is finished. So he has to go to number six, and his speed figures aren't even close enough. So let's throw our collector off the board. I mean, do we even have to say anything about Stiletto Boy? Ten starts, two wins, right? Speed figures are just horrible. If you think our collectors are bad, you should take a look at the number seven. Let's throw Stiletto Boy. He can't beat these horses off the ticket. And we talk about the horse that is compromised, I believe, more than anyone in the field. Just because of his post position, the number eight, Medina Spirit. He cannot sit off the pace and run by, in my opinion, Nick's go. And then out finish Essential Quality, Max Player, or Hot Rod Charlie. So Medina Spirit, just to the fact that he's in the eighth hole, he has to get out. And he needs to be up close. I don't like him here. I can't throw Medina Spirit out. I just think it's the wrong style for him in this race. We do not like Medina Spirit. Let me say it again at all in this race. He's out. That's the number eight. And, of course, I believe the X factor and the value in the race is Max Player. This horse has improved tremendously, and his speed figure is better than all three of the three-year-olds. That would be Medina Spirit, Essential Quality, and Hot Rod Charlie. Max Player is 8-1, to one, and this horse I will not leave off my ticket. And any of the sheet readers out there that know how to read the sheets and see it understand that Max Player could run by all of these horses, including Nick Scott. So you say to yourself, you say, well, what does this mean, Mr. Speed King? 
pound for pound, if you ask me, is Nick's goes race to lead. I believe Hot Rod Charlie is sitting on a tremendous, tremendous race. I do. So our first pick in this race will be the Chuckster. But make, let me make it clear. He has to improve a lot if Nick's go runs his race. Our second choice, obviously, is Nick's go. It's his race to lose. He is extremely, extremely good people. And if each one of these horses run their last race, they can't beat Nick's go. So to me, it's really a two-horse race with one X factor. I don't think Medina Spirit can beat Hot Rod Charlie or Nick's go. I don't think Essential Quality can be Nick's Go or Hot Rod Charlie. I literally think it's up to these two horses to determine the likely winner of this year's Classic. Essential um, uh, Nick's Go or Hot Rod Charlie. I think those are the two horses that will decide this race. Now, is there a X factor? That's right. We don't like essential quality in this spot. We don't like Medina Spirit in this spot. Tripoli has no chance. Express Train has no chance. Number six, Art Collector's going to get smoke, and Stiletto Boy is just having a good outing for his people. He has no chance. The X factor is the number nine horse, Max Player, and the value for me. He's in the nine hole, which is a perfect spot. They're going to go, he's going to break last and get over. And I tell you, he's going to stay close and he could pick these horses up and lay them down and this horse is moving forward. So there it is. We believe that uh, it's, uh, Hot Rod Charlie and Nick's Go are the two likely winners. We threw out Medina Spirit and that's right, we threw out Essential Quality. We don't think either one of them can win this race. You surely have to use them underneath. So that leaves us with the only X factor, and that would be Max Player. I will not leave Steve Asmussen Horse off my ticket, and I would suggest you don't either. They have to be Hot Rod Charlie and Nick's Go. So that's our three top picks, y'all. We think uh, Hot Rod is sitting on a good race. Nick's go. I believe that they're even. He will have to regress in order to beat them. So we believe it's Hot Rod and Nick's go right around the track. And the X Factor, if things don't go right for those two, I believe Max Player, who is the X Factor, will pick him up and can lay him down here. Well, there it is, folks. Your Speed King, the win out there on the limb. Once again, we believe the top two horses in this year's Classic is Hot Rod, Charlie, and Nick's go. We threw out Medina Spirit. We threw out Essential Quality. And our third choice, we believe, of course, that can pick him up, that offers the best value at 8 or 10 to 1 to upset the field, would be Max Player. He is our value play in here. But he needs to lay it down in order to do it. There it is, folks. Stay classy in all you do. I hope you've made some money up to this point when we start on Friday. As always, if they go low, you go high. And thank you so much for all the support the last week as we've done each and every one of these Breeders' Cup races. Again, we believe it's Hot Rod Charlie and Nick's go around the track. Who is our upsetter of the race? We believe it's Max Player. He just happens to be my guy. Steve Asmus. Talk to you folks. Have some fun. Remember, there's nothing wrong with having fun unless you're not getting none. There it is, folks. There's your classic. There's your granddaddy of it all. Let me know what you think. Comment. I know y'all going to have plenty of comments. Talk to you.